Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Neki broadcast. This time we are casting a tournament. We are casting a game between two absolute masters of the game. Uh, we have here in the north part as the blue player, Dauntless. You all know Dauntless. He is a beast, to say the least. And made it even rhyme there. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, and uh, this is Caritas. And uh, if there's anything better than Dauntless, then it's uh, uh, Caritas, uh, definitely. Um, I am excluding myself because obviously I cannot be an objective um, commentator on this aspect. Anyway, without further ado, this was a match played in um, the tournament. So both these guys are trying particularly hard and uh, I believe uh, Dauntless has one win over Caritas. This is what, I mean, at the moment when the game was played, Dauntless had one win over Caritas. So basically, Caritas absolutely needs to win here. If Caritas loses, he's basically out of the tournament. Exciting game. The map is Welding Channel. And I have no idea what Dauntless is, to be honest. He could be Elf or Loyalist. So let's see there we go come on don't give me some recruits <laughs> and i don't see great don't is finally recruiting he is loyalist this will be an absolutely fabulous game because as we know loyalist is overpowered and uh, dauntless is overpowered so this northern side will have a particularly strong attack that would be and this is this these recruits say that Dauntless means business, right? So let's see what is the response from our red player here. Okay, there this is a recruit which is heavy on outlaws. And there is one um let me see. Oh, never mind. There is one guardsman who will probably uh, grab this village. This is the most vulnerable village, pretty standard, and one griffin to you know run around scout go from left side to a right hand side the only advantage kind of an advantage that uh, a red player has on this map are these griffins if he can survive long enough to recruit three or four griffins then he will be able to switch sides he will be able to kill all these mammon fighters and he will be able to i would say uh, be in a much more comfortable position. However, I don't think he will survive this long. I mean, these units, they are not particularly, they don't fare particularly well versus these calves. These absolutely melt to calves. So it will be really interesting since he did not recruit anything defensive for the left-hand side. So we shall see how this game unfolds, how Dauntless attacks unfold and there it is <laughs> this is actually a nice little move so these two calves can i think reach one two three four five six seven eight. yeah definitely if this one is quick and i think it is this one can reach this particular village and the horseman can reach it as well so if for example a red player was to place the footpad on this village Dauntless will do this uh, cute little move, attack it with two calves. And this footpad is, deals absolutely no damage in return. And I see that the footpad has melee impact. Therefore, this is not ladder era. And ladies and gentlemen, I think Dauntless has this more or less in the bag because, uh, I mean, let's be serious, eight movement points calves. Um, and they don't even use the no mirror at it. That is absolutely odd. Anyway, let's see how this uh, attack is going to play out. So if at this point the footpad, again, the footpad has 70%. So I can tell you, I can assure you that Dauntless is going to attack this footpad with both these calves. So if the footpad manages to, let's say, defend against all five attacks well he actually needs to defend against both the attacks from the horseman because the horseman is the one dealing tremendous damage uh so if he somehow manages to evade both of these attacks then i would say the game is even but if this horseman gets one hit in and this footpad dies it's already an incredibly strong start for dauntless 
this was exciting. Let's see how the odds, who the odds favor. So I will just play single move. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? <laughs> he is going to do it. He keeps stopping because he he is basically um, he keeps uh, seeing. He keeps scouting new units. So there you go. Is he not going to do it? Oh come on, Dauntless! You know the crowd wants you to do it. Oh, and he doesn't go for it. I am a bit disappointed. I must say, having one game. In the bag, in one game lead, I would have gone for this chance. I mean, if he had... Okay, it's a strong, resilient footpad. Yeah, that's fine, but... I don't agree with this. He should have gone for it. It would have been highly, highly spectacular. Anyway, uh, who am I to say? I'm not in this tournament, whereas these guys are playing for... Um, for gold obviously for the first place that is the ultimate purpose but i would say a bit surprising that dauntless played so conservatively um anyway uh he's probably thinking you know i, I could also understand this mindset he's probably thinking i'm playing versus dwarf this is absolutely brilliant right so um i intend to not mess this up take it slow because the more time um, the more time elapses, the stronger my army will be. I will have more horsemen, which will enable me to attack. I will have more calves to cover my, um, you know, cover my weak spots in the front line as I attack. I would have more speedmen who can definitely exchange blows with uh, uh, with uh, dwarvish fighters, and they are cheaper, and they also have ranged attacks. So, and at the same time, you know, we have two thieves coming. So it's it's more of a gamble on this left hand side. So there is an attack coming on the left hand side, and he only has a quick intelligence spearman. So he might think, look, I have a problem on the left hand side. If I keep pushing on the right hand side, then I might be weak when the attack does come, and uh, you know I will be getting a village. He will be getting a village. We will be exchanging units, but my units are much stronger. I feel, especially I mean, look at the horseman, twenty three gold. Uh, and the calves, 17 gold, then, you know, 14, 13, 13, 14, are much stronger than these units. I really don't want to be exchanging a calf for a footpad. So, uh, you know, it could also work this way. So this is a relatively strong attack coming on the left-hand side. However, the best attack, in my opinion, uh, the best defense, in my opinion, is attack. So if he did manage to make a, a cute play on this side, then uh, suddenly the focus of the red player would have shifted from massive attack on the left-hand side to saving the game on the right-hand side. But this is just my two cents. Anyway, enough with the rambling from my side. Let's see what these guys can do. I don't see him particularly well on the left-hand side uh, because he only has one cab. I mean, calves are awesome, but they can't defend versus one, two, three, four units. So from this perspective, is he trying to slowly move his units to the other side? He, he's probably saying, I'm going to let this be. I'm going to let him have this village. And then I am going to take it back during the day. As you can see, he's not even recruiting units. He is banking a bit. Expect to see maybe perhaps a mage or a spearman, I would say. Mage or spearman, depending on how, how much risk he's willing to take. Uh, if he's saying, okay, I'm going to just move these units over and then I'm going to think about the attack and I'm going to recruit a mage, though it's a bit early for a mage. I would even say a heavy infantryman at this point, simply because it would be absolutely awesome versus all these units. But, and, uh, you know, it's going to be night, so he's, he's going to have a lot of idle time walking around trying to get into offensive position. He will not be doing anything useful, dauntless, I mean. But uh, let's see, uh, say, so yeah, he's moving his units on the other side and another calf. So this is basically saying I am going to go for the long game and I'm going to um, abuse my extra mobility. I did not expect that. I did not expect him staying on the village. That is in my opinion, uh, an unnecessary risk. 
I mean, he can be backstabbed twice. He can be attacked with Poacher. He can be attacked with the Griffin. He's probably saying, look, it's still dusk. It's not night. So these thieves, although they are great, they only deal, none of them is strong. So they only deal eight damage each. I will be able to deal some retaliation damage. And, you know, if you do get the village in the end, then you end up having a lot of um, hurt units. And I'll be able to surround them with all these calves. And I have the merman as well to cut off the retreat, maybe steal a village or two. So do think about it. Uh, if you do go all in for this village, the merman is going to get the village in return and you will struggle to get it out of the village unless you have an oaf, but the oaf does not have good terrain around the, around the uh, merman. So anyway, um, it's Domless is basically saying, look, <laughs> you are the one that needs the win. I am not that desperate. If you are that desperate, Go on, attack this quick intelligence spearman. However, it is a quick intelligence spearman. Will Red take this challenge? I'll just play single move. Apparently not. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I expected a much more aggressive game. It seems both these players, with all due respect, I said in the beginning they are both very good, but both these players are chickens. Uh, I don't have any other explanation. None of them is willing to take any risks. Anyway, uh, I could understand why Red didn't do it. I mean, there's a whole army of calves. Even if it's, even if it's going to be, um, um, let's say, night, they still deal quite a lot of damage versus these thieves. And these thieves, <laughs> they don't deal a lot of retaliation damage. They only deal true damage if they backstab. So I can understand. I can, I can understand both, to be honest. There is a logical explanation for both these players' moves. However, I personally would have taken more risks. And he decides to go for the moment. That's interesting. Well, I guess it's fine because the moment does not really have a path to go back. So he says, instead of risking everything on this payment, I'm going to go for the lower reward, which is the moment fighter. However, uh, lower reward with lower risk as well so um he's gonna basically take less risk and um if he deals one damage he doesn't even care whether the moment goes to the village or not because the moment will be much easier to kill so if he deals some damage oh and he does two out of two that might really hurt dauntless that is an interesting development so 70 percent here so probably this is what Dauntless was banking on. I could go 70% and I should be fine. But two out of two does hurt. So now uh, Red must be really happy for not taking this risk. He's going for the shore kill, more or less. He could even uh, use the footpad to hit the Merman uh, if he absolutely needs to. And he can surround the Merman with the Griffin Rider and with the footpad. It's really a pity for Dauntless that this Griffin got two out of two. But this suddenly makes the game more interesting. So uh, this moment fulfilled its purpose. It did stop the attack on the left-hand side. However, it seems it's going to pay with its life. Uh, okay. An interesting attempt of a run by. I guess it's safe as long as you're out of the horseman reach. So that is, that is fine. And probably this will also push a bit forward to put more pressure. Interesting to see how Dundas will deal with it. Probably he's going to move all his units back to the right-hand side. Um, or oh, not here, it's just the horse of this village and this on this, and then he will be fine. Um, but again, he's recruiting all these calves so he could go left, right, left, right, until he gains a critical mass of units, and these units are good in both attacking and defending. Uh, so that seems to be his strategy, abusing the, um, let's say, the fact that his race, his faction is overpowered. Anyway, another griffin. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So as the game goes on, and if there isn't too much pressure being put on the red player, he will keep amassing these griffins, which are great on this map. And it's basically leveraging the power of his gold. They do cost a lot of money, but look, um, for example, if, if Dundas were to have a lot of money, he would recruit these horsemen, which are uh, marvelous units, right? So if Red was to have a lot of money due to the nature of the game and the banking and the dynamics of the game, he will recruit these griffins. However, on this map, griffins are better than horsemen. So that's one thing that is going uh, well for our Red player. And considering that this moment is already hit, this is basically 
food. Um, it's an unfortunate start for Dauntless, especially since he was so cautious. It seems this move with the moment was a bit overambitious and it didn't really play out uh, in sync with the rest of his strategy. So he was incredibly cautious on the left-hand side here. However, he was a bit too aggressive with the Merman. You either are aggressive with everything or are cautious with everything. Unfortunately, this is how most of times West North is. But uh, one Merman is not the end of the world, so he can lose it. Not a problem. Okay, he went for 70%. He's basically saying, look, you want to fight me? That's fine. Um, at least I will deal some retaliation damage. You will lose some time. I'm going to lose the moment anyway. Might as well be on 70%. And that was his plan all along. Probably that's why he went all the way here. He was probably saying, the griffin will attack me. Uh, he will probably get one hit in. That will go on 70%. And then he will basically need to invest a lot of time to kill me. Anyway, um, it didn't play out because he, he basically was hit twice. So let us see here. Okay, there are the calves going left and right, making sure there's some sort of line here. So, but that's not going to. I mean, if if he didn't attack, if Red did not attack uh, uh, during uh, uh, during the previous turn, where he could leverage the power of his backstabs, he is most definitely not going to attack this turn. Okay, interesting. So there is the mage for attack, quick mage. So that's that adds to the mobility. So lucky don't there with the recruit. Oh, that griffin. I feel I feel that this griffin was a bit of a marksman, was a bit of a sniper. He did deal a lot of damage. So moment gone. Now we do have ourselves a game. So red is in a strong position. I would say he can continue recruiting these griffins and he could force Dauntless to um, continue with this defensive strategy, recruiting calves, moving left to right. And uh, to be fair, uh, mass griffins will defeat mass calves. Um, well, you have to throw in some other units as well, but because it's a lot of water here, uh, mass griffins will defend, will, will definitely defeat any of um, Blue's units. Anyway, uh, let's see how uh, Red slowly presses his advantage now. So again, he's not taking any risks. He's basically saying, well, I'm going to keep this position so I can perhaps uh, do a backstab here and another backstab there. It's quite useful to do backstabs with the Griffins. I mean, quite easy because obviously the Griffin has a lot of mobility and he could uh, get into a position that offers um, the backstab to the Thief. So uh, thieves and uh, griffins go together like uh, peanut butter and jelly, I believe. Some people like that combination a lot. Is there another griffin? No. He's basically saying, look, I do need, in case of this, this game starts, um, um, let's say, going out of hand, I do need a stopper. I do need a defender on this village, a defender on this village, at least, um, you know, uh, try to um, discourage those calves from attacking head on, which is fine. Basically, he is. Uh, I'm just going to play side's turn here because, again, it's still second watch. I feel he could have been a bit more aggressive, but probably he's thinking, look. I still I I won't be able to attack with only one spearman. I need another spearman at least realistically. So why 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 bother? I mean, um, obviously uh, the speed of my attack is going to be the speed of this spearman more or less. So why bother look strong when I actually am not that strong and my opponent knows it. Uh which is a fair point from Dauntless side and as you can see red is pulling back because Obviously, Dawn is coming, and look at these griffins flying around. This griffin basically is like a radar. Whenever uh, Dawn is going to recruit another Merman, you will definitely see another griffin from Red Player. So why? Because Merman is useless unless it's in the middle. So um, uh, Red would have basically the luxury of recruiting another semi-useless unit, right? Because it's in the middle, it's for... Um, uh, say uh water control but at the same time the griffin is so much more useful than the 
uh, moment because it can get involved in these skirmishes left and right coming basically out of nowhere. It's a very strong position for a red player with a good observability of the fight. So Donless has to play a bit um, knowing, probably he has labels, knowing that there are two griffins flying around. So it's a bit uncomfortable to play for Donless at this point. But again, one moment lost, not the end. Okay, another moment, I expect another griffin. This is what I would do. Because this moment will basically have no, no other way than coming throughout the water. So three griffins will definitely be able to make quick work of this moment before it even reaches um, an area that is remotely uh, threatening. But there, as we were talking, there is a sizable force, which Donless carefully recruited. I would have had one more Spearman in there. I believe there are too many caps, but who am I to judge? So um, Spearman on the village, then even Griffin on 60%. Does he have a strong resilient one? No, he does not. But he intends to put resilient thunder on the, mount <laughs> on the mountain. And uh, that should be enough of a deterrent, I feel, against this attack. Uh, he can even leave the spearman. He can even leave the guardsman on the village until it dies. It will take a long time for Dauntless to kill it. And plus, because he was a bit too cautious last time, his mage is not in range of the village. His mage should have been in range of the village. However, it's still dawn. And Dauntless is player two, so it's still fine because at dawn the mage will be in a very aggressive position. So actually, um, I take that back. Very good computation from Daunt. So let's see here. Yeah, again, this would be probably on the 60% or on the 70%. Everything goes back on the uh, on this side and an oath. Well, given the fact that there's a mage running about. An off is not that bad of a recruit. It's actually a quite a good recruit. He could just kill the mage and then do absolutely nothing. And the off would have paid for itself. However, um, I feel that the griffin would have achieved the same purpose. Simply because, you know, if you have two griffins attacking a mage, the mage would probably die. So if he got some retaliation from this uh, guardsman. Um... I would, he's not that worried, to be honest, about this uh, Merman, and I don't blame him. And he probably says, look, this off is also, um, yeah, it's also more efficient in killing the mage than the griffins, right? So it only has, needs one tile, and uh, it's also a powerful deterrent for the mage stepping in and attacking. And I do believe that Don't will not commit to this attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units versus one, two, three, four, five, six units and recruiting from red. So from this perspective, Daunt is not going to attack, especially how this game went. I mean, he did not attack here. Why would he attack on the left-hand side? Uh, from this perspective, a griffin would have been better on the long term. I don't know if he had the money, so I might be talking nonsense at this point, but I do remember him having the money. So let's see what Daunt is going to be doing. He's actually going to fake an attack on the left-hand side. Look, this is not an attack. This is basically being extremely, extremely far away, extremely cautious. This is basically what the Cavs uh, allow you to. You could still put pressure from afar, so you could still be quite safe far away while putting some pressure, right? But I could tell you that he's not going to push forward with this attack. No way, no way. It's too late. Too late, too little. He's just faking uh, aggression at this point. He is. So, yeah. Dauntless is also faking aggression on the right hand side. He's not going to, he's not going to push anywhere. Um, so, there you go. More spearmen, more muscle, and resilient, strong, resilient, strong. That should make things more interesting. And um, it's uh, going to go uh, on for quite a while, this game. I believe they are both uh, recruiting sizable armies with good unit compositions. So probably uh, Dauntless was going to say, I'm going to recruit Spearmen until I get resilient strong ones. And uh, Red is also going to start recruiting Dwarves. Uh, he needs them, so he needs something here. He, he saw how powerful this attack was with only one horseman. 
So he uh, needs at least one more unit around here on 60% or on 70% because this footpad does absolutely nothing in defense. Um, so red is also going to slowly shift to dwarves. Um, blue is going to add more spearmen and probably one more horseman, one more mage. Um, Blue will not be able to split his units left and right. He will not be able to do an attack on both sides. He will have to stick to this side. And he will need two mages to be able to kill the guardsman, which is strong resilience. So I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe two mages and a horseman will be able to kill a guardsman. Uh, but we shall see. Um, or he might want to switch and do an attack here. Although I seriously doubt that um anyway let's see how the game progressed so you see uh red player is absolutely knows he's ahead he is not going to um he's going he's going to even bring his leader that is absolute that i mean you've seen this game he's not going to do anything with his leader right only if let's say uh Blue becomes crazy and, and pushes into this. Maybe then he will bring his leader, but he's just going to go back and recruit. I, I mean, based on how these guys have been playing, he is going to go back and recruit. I can assure you 200% that this is what will happen. Moving on, this is slowly evolving towards a very long game where there is going to be one fight and one fight only that will decide the outcome of the game. So you see all these units building a huge front line, right? And you see all these units, one, two, three, three outlaws. Those don't have attack power unless the thieves can backstab. So these units will not be able to do much, even with the strong oath, perhaps, um, if the strong oath manages to kill this spearman and then they manage to get one cav with backstab. However, I do think that Dauntless is going to protect this village much better than it is protected now. And um, I feel that Red will not take risks. He will go back, perhaps recruit another oath. This is how I would do it. It's too late now. I mean, the Loyalist has the units to defend. and. Um, I, I don't see this attack doing anything, to be honest, but I might be mistaken. There's the griffin. So uh, I did, I would have recruited it a bit earlier. However, now it's not, not too late. As soon as he sees a merman, he should recruit another griffin. Basically, this is what red should do. And he will be in an extremely strong position. Now, this is incredibly interesting. Why? Because the griffin could go around of course, he could attack the mage, he could do a number of things. But what the griffin could do, he could provide backstepping support for the uh, thieves, right? So in order to prevent that backstepping support from happening, our blue player would need to make a huge line on the left-hand side, which I think he cannot afford. So because he can't afford that, um, he might be, he might have to... For example, he could he could do some 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 sort of of hexagon, right? Uh, around uh, he he could try, for example, to put this particular strong quick spearman on these mushrooms, and then it would be some sort of a line. At least it would prevent the griffin run by, right? It would it this particular resilient strong spearman has a lot of tiles on him. So anyway, he could do something like this. Uh, a very innovative defensive structure because he does not have enough units, I feel, to close the gaps. Uh, or the more the more sensible thing to do is for him to retreat, take less risks, and then recruit another mage. And with the white mage and two mages, regain this village easily uh, at dawn. That would be easy, I think. Uh, it would be so much easier to defend if you give away this village. However, if he does that, more griffins are coming, and uh, this village will be more and more difficult to protect in the future. So uh, he might lose in terms of uh, initiative. It will be interesting to see what how he chooses to defend this. So he does go back. 
because it would have been absolutely horrendous to defend that line. And now he is basically saying, look, I'm going to use my white mage and I'm going to take this village back no matter what you do. Uh, and even a skirmisher uh, to go behind enemy lines and, for example, kill the Dwarvish of Saka. Um Plus, the Merman is here to close the gap. However, the Merman has to be careful. There are many griffins flying in the sky at this point. Now, if I were red, I would somehow do another passive, because this, this, is, this was the, the name of the game, passive aggressiveness. I would perhaps take this village with the Guardsman, which is strong resilient, and I would put some units here and here, probably the Griffins, unfortunately, because that's the only, only units left. Then I would close the gaps with the Thieves, and perhaps with, I'll bring also this Griffin to help. Um, and um, so two Griffins here to close the gap. That would be Griffin side, then Thief side, like this, with the Oath behind, you know, threatening the White Mage. So the White Mage can't really go in because of this Oath. Or if he does go in, he must make sure that the unit that he attacks dies. Because otherwise, the Oath is going to come and destroy this White Mage. So I would say Griffins here, Guardsmen in the village, Thieves on this side, and... um be ready to run away at second watch um we shall see if he does this however he might if he does this he should be ready to perhaps sacrifice this this guardsman and <laughs> seeing how this game went so far i'm not sure whether red is willing to make that sacrifice so let's see if he is willing or not yes he is and he even took a more aggressive stance than what I was initially proposing. So he's basically saying, no, you're going to have only two tiles on this guardsman. So I'm going to make sure that this village stays with me. So if you want to have three tiles, go for the griffin. Not a problem. I'm willing to lose the griffin. But I will not lose. Oh, he's not even, he's not even going to have two tiles on the griffin. That's, that's a nice defense here. So if you look, this, this hill is inaccessible to um to the blue player so uh quite nice here there are three tiles on this thief however uh, this is such a low priority target it's just so cheap and it would put blue player in a terrible position so um, he's not even uh, red is not even worried about that so he took a more aggressive stance but because of this aggressive stance it would be more difficult to retreat i feel so it would be interesting to see how blue player plays it at this point i would be very very aggressive i would go back with my leader and oh he can't recruit uh but i would say i would place these units forward i would even place my spearman on the forest and throw a spear at this griffin rider i would even throw another spear with this spearman i would basically push my spear i'll even push my spearman forward and i will throw spears at these griffins so four spears i will throw away I will throw and then I will make a line and basically say, look, you want to fight here at uh, second watch? That's fine. When dawn comes, I'm going to absolutely pulverize you. Um, and maybe what I'm proposing is a bit too aggressive, but he can definitely push this line forward and um, at, at least get the mountain, get the forest, get this forest, get this hill, uh, you know, put this particular spearman on the mountain, make sure that they don't start from behind, they start at the exactly the edge of the plain field so that they can run fast when dawn comes. Um, so something of this sort. Now, another run by in the making here, so forcing um, our, our blue player to pull some units back, but uh, I don't expect much to happen on this right-hand side. Well, he even goes, I'm a bit surprised, to be honest. So, okay, that is very interesting. So that is very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So basically, Dauntless says, I'm going to give up this side, which I don't agree with. I personally would have been a bit more aggressive. But he was basically saying, look, the more time goes by, uh, our red player is going to have more and more griffins, and it would be more difficult for me to get this particular red village. However, this guardsman is pretty slow, so I not necessarily agree with that, uh, especially if he recruits a uh, you know, more spearmen and then he is uh, more comfortable in doing this line here. 
he might not have been able to he might not even he might not have been forced to retreat next time if he had enough enough spearmen however uh, dauntless says look he was a bit too aggressive with these units and because he was so aggressive i can catch two of them right and i can kill them and at least uh, i will get something out of this fight i will get two units i'll get some experience and this will and i will get this village in the end i guess uh and this will pay off however um, dwarf has two extra villages at this point he's able to reinforce quickly on the right hand side so this lost time i know it seems pretty quick because he has the calves but it it is lost time, trust me. This lost time will not be... I mean, he, this, this move will be too slow, I feel. I mean, especially killing the guardsmen. That will take ages. Plus, he might lose the merman if, if this uh, griffin rider has a magic attack like his brethren. And two griffins are able to reinforce so quickly. He could even recruit another griffin. So I, I don't put strategically. I don't particularly like this move. However... If he does manage to kill these units quickly, which I'm not sure whether he will or not, it might pay off. So three units with no losses might pay off for the time lost in this village. However, coming back here and uh, regaining this village, reclaiming this village, will be extremely improbable, uh, which is a, um, let's say, a curious move from Dauntless. Anyway, uh, let's see how this plays out. Okay. That's not too bad for our blue player. But again, the griffins come back. And he decides not to press the issue on the left-hand side. And now, if you look at it... Well, this particular fighter should be uh, in grave danger at this point. Anyway, moving forward with this maneuver from Dauntless, which is very interesting, but in my opinion, it's a bit risky because it basically um, seizes control to red player of the, of the left village. So moving forward, let's see what's going to happen next. There you go. Those were... So those footpads are punching bags. They stand no chance against these calves. And we see a massive movement of troops towards the right-hand side. So at this moment, Dauntless is all in. And as night comes, I expect these two spearmen to be absolutely demolished. Because we have an Ulfsucker here. And this one is definitely going to fall. This one will follow shortly with uh, the griffin, be griffin behind him and also with the backstab. So these two villages are already reds. It's only a matter of time. So what I would expect Dauntless to do is basically either um, after killing these units, pulling back, which is again waste of time going back and forth during the day, or what I would expect him to do, moving towards the right with absolutely everything. So that could work. So the white mage can heal all this army. But again, that would take crazy amounts of time. And if you look at the, at, you know, uh, the village density on the right-hand side of the map is not that significant. Therefore, um, he, he will be running into no man's land. He could get one village here, and that's basically it. Whereas red player will be getting one, two, three villages. And then this, these four villages will be next. So it's, it's a bit odd. But uh, I, I'm, I'm really not sure what other options Dauntless has at this point. So let's see Red's response. Obviously, he wants to deal as much damage as possible. And this is a, a great target, very expensive. And it's uh, obviously limiting Daunt's ability to attack. Uh, for example, this Dwarvish fighter. Should have been dead now with that horseman on the field. It's only got 30% defense. Now it would be extremely difficult to kill this. And if we look at the stats, Dauntless has already lost two units. The Merman in the beginning. And if you look at the value of the units lost, you see the 23 gold horsemen. 
That was a bit unfortunate. And again, it takes ages to kill this spearman. However, he's doing fine in the end, I would say. A bit unlucky there with the fighter. Three out of three! And there goes the griffin. And that was, to be honest, quite nice for Dauntless. So he managed to kill three units there. So he managed to kill the spearman, the fighter, and uh, also the griffin on the village. And remember, griffin is a very expensive target, similar to the horseman that Dauntless lost. So there is another griffin here, which is more or less about to level up. However, I don't see this wall holding for long. Um, and these units desperately need to heal. And there's no uh, white mage next to them. Um, so I'm not sure whether the... I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm really concerned for these two spearmen when uh, dusk comes. However, there are still some turns left before dusk. So let's see. A dwarf's response? Well, a pretty conservative, I would say. Not many movements, but he did place this Osaka so that Osaka can reach the top or the bottom spearman. And we have a strong, quick spearman here. Uh, Donless can absolutely not attack into this. That would be suicidal. He just needs to recruit. If he went this, you know, if he went down this path, he just needs to recruit, I would say, a spearman or a fencer to try to put some pressure on this oaf. Um, and he should pray. And if he isn't, well, then he should. So on this side, I don't see him attacking into this guardsman or this griffin or these villages or this castle. So I would expect him to retreat and try to heal uh, and go back with the bounty of uh, killing three units. Now, the problem is when he gets back home, he will have injured calves. And at the same time, it will be nighttime. So he won't be able to fight. And I am scared that these dwarves are going to kill tons of units. Or if they don't, they are going to get tons of villages. So yeah, Dauntless is retreating. Um, he's trying to keep this village, which, I mean, uh, again, it's difficult to support this unit. This unit is basically an offering. So if, I mean, uh, and the trapper. Right, the trapper could just attack this with ranged attack during the night, and the griffin rider can 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 stop its retreat. You know, you can have this poacher and this griffin surrounding it, and the trapper coming. And I mean, this this will die. It's it was all this effort uh, for three units. That's fine, but the village won't. You know, this village is much more stable than this one, and much more difficult, much more much more easier to defend. Um, so he does go with the fencer to put some pressure, and uh, luckily for him, the fencer is resilient strong, so he does put some pressure on the Ulfsaka. Uh He does have another uh, fencer here, in case an Ulf is will be recruited, then the fencer can put uh, also pressure on that one. However, um, until the Ulf is recruited, until the Ulf reaches the village door, it will already be night. Time. So uh, let's see how uh, Dwarf decides to play it. So obviously pushing forward on the right hand side, also with the leader and taking a very aggressive position. <clears throat> so he says, I don't need an oath. A thief will be enough. And I agree with him. So there's no way that Don't can prevent this spearman from being uh, backstabbed. So Don't should go back on this side. Three calves unable to heal. That is just sad. And as you can see, uh, the the griffin took a very aggressive position here. Why? So he could go in the forest, so backstab could work on this particular spearman. So there's no way Don't could defend this. He will have to sacrifice the spearman, or he would have to commit even more units. He would have to bring the fencer on the mountain, I would say, and he would have to bring the spearman on the forest, and he would have to pray that this particular spearman survives the backstab because the guardsman will go on the on the plane and uh, then the backstab will eventually happen. 
So he will have to pray that this spearman survives the backstab and the oath, which I don't believe will happen. I believe this spearman will die. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> if anybody can come uh, from this, then uh, that player is dauntless. So I see retreat, shameful retreat on this side, healing the calves. And um, I don't even think retreating is an option on this side. Praying, praying is an option always. So lots of prayers for daunt on this particular side. Anyway, let's see how Don decides to play. So um, he is going to heal his units with the white mage. So that is great use of his leader. And probably he had this into account when he switched sides saying that, look, if I will have a lot of injured units, I will just be able to heal them with the white mage. So I should be fine. I don't need to rest my units in villages. So retreat here, there was no way he could survive all these units uh, and these units are going to put pressure on the right hand side however he has not reinforced the left hand side for a long time so okay and there it is spearman on the forest and i sh i think red player should it's difficult to say it depends on the chances of on, of this oath but i would say look he has two thieves at this point I would say go for it. Do a backstab. See what happens. Uh, Guardsman is not going to die that easily anyway. Uh, and it's going to be knight next. So I would say take the risks. Why not? Take it. Uh, he can even shoot once with the thunder. See what happens. And then not even backstab. Just use the oath. Or he can just kill. If he gets lucky with the thunder. He could just kill this unit. And then use the oath on the spearman. On the forest. So it all plays down to luck ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. I am really curious whether, so all these players have been, uh, <laughs> all these, uh, there's only two of them. So both these players have been extremely cautious. Will Red finally take the risk? I want to see some risk taking in this game. And there's a shooter out on the field. He shoots the Spearman. I didn't even realize that that was a target simply because it doesn't seem to offer anything. However, um... Apparently, Red is not interested, and he says, I want to just kill as many units as possible. I'm not necessarily interested in the villages. This is what this particular move is telling me. Or perhaps he wants to kill this Spearman and then backstab the Fencer. He's basically saying, look, this Fencer is uh, dangerous for my uh, oath. And I want to make sure that I kill the Fencer. So um, let's see how he decides to play it out. Okay, that is not going to finish off the Spearman, but it will get the Spearman into um, dangerously low levels, which the Griffin Rider could deal with. Three out of four. So that should be finished off by this Griffin. And then I would say backstab on the Fencer. Let's see if this is indeed the case. There it is. And now with, will the fencer be backstabbed or not? Okay. So definitely the fencer a target because it's also... Um, so going on the fencer kind of forms a, a flock of units. I wouldn't go uh, as far as calling it a line. Kind of forms a flock of units here somewhat protecting the thunder and the poacher on 40 and 30 percent respectively so is he going for it okay he's not going to go for backstab which is a bit odd he's just going to form a line and basically he's going to say look it's night what are you going to do i'm even in a more aggressive position as before i killed also one of your units so I also have one extra village. So what are you going to do? I want to see your plays because I'm in a better position and it's night. So it's your game to lose. This is the statement that Red is making. He is not keen on risking any more retaliation damage. He just he really wants to wait for night with uh, high HP units. And I don't blame him. This is another way to play in this situation. He does push on the right-hand side. Basically, he knows that 
Dauntless is spread thin at this point. So plus it's knight, so he does not care that much. He even pushes the Thunderer forward. One, two, three, four, five. He will even be in range of this village. Or one, two, three, four, five in range of this cav. Anyway, he just pushes the Thunderer forward. Why? Because he knows if a fight occurs here, he always has the backstabber. And he can deal a lot of damage actually with the poacher to calves at night. Um, a thief can deal damage um, at, I mean, to any other unit except the cav. So he's in a good position to deal healthy amounts of damage. And uh, this particular unit is low, so uh, it won't be able to fight. So it's just putting pressure, just giving Dauntless one more thing to think about. And he should go back, maybe wait another turn and recruit another griffin. Let's see. Okay, he's going to poke a bit that Spearman as well. Or at least I would expect him to do so. Okay, off in the middle of the field. He says, not a problem. Go for it. If I kill your fencer during the night, then uh, this off has already served its purpose. Then I can just uh, kill your, uh, your fencer. Uh, and uh, get strong positions in these uh, hills. Um, okay, that's one way to go about it. And the heal from the White Mage, always nice to see. That was a powerful 32 hit points heal. Okay, that's an odd recruit. I guess he wants to deal damage to the Griffins without fear of retaliation, which is absolutely fine. Plus, he sees some ranged units here, and he's thinking, okay. I would have personally gone for a Spearman. It's a bit more... Um, and I would have, of course, I would have taken <laughs> the chance of attacking a Griffin with a Spearman. Not a problem for me. Okay, so he's going for it. He's basically saying time to uh, trim the numbers of this army who has been so annoying for so long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, he he can do it. He can do it. If he manages to uh, kill this griffin, he will be in an excellent position. Okay, two out of three. That's 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 great. It's not too bad. However, now he does need to take. Uh, some risks. He does need to use some melee units on this Griffin, and I know this is something that Dauntless like hate hates hates to do. So it will be the Spearman, yeah. Unfortunately, quick intelligent, but it will have to do. Okay, two out of three. That's not too bad. That it's that's actually excellent. So he can put the experience into this cavalryman. I would expect him to do so. Let's see if he does that. There it is. Okay, not too bad for Daunt. Uh, he is in okay shape at this moment. However, he does need to cover this white mage leader. Had he missed that attack on the griffin, he would have been in terrible, terrible shape. He does have the fencer. Don't, don't forget about that. So, uh, however, um, he needs more units. He desperately needs more units to cover his leader so he does have a cavalryman he does have another cavalryman kind of but not in it's not in a good enough position he needs to bring this merman fighter back on the village then even sacrifice this merman fighter on the uh, on, on flat ground i would i would i would say he desperately needs this leader to be alive and bring also the fencer here on 70% cover with this merman fighter as a backup in, in case of the in case of the uh, in case the fencer dies. Bring also this moment fighter on 40%. Uh, or, I'm, I'm not sure what the odds are, but he could also attack the Dwarvish of Sukka and place the fencer in the middle, and that would also be fine. However, this is dangerous position for White Mage. Okay, he does. Okay, he even attacks. I wouldn't have attacked. I would have just protected my leader because this... Cav, he only got minor damage, but now he's so much closer to dying than before. There is the Merman fighter coming and taking the village. And there is the fencer on the hill. And the Merman fighter covering. So he is scared. He knows he's in a difficult position. 
And I don't blame him. And if he was not praying before, he definitely is now, I can tell you. These two fishes tell me that Don't is currently praying. You can hear him from here if you are quiet enough. So um, he's going to desperately pull everything back, go on the left-hand side. And if he manages to survive this turn, and of course, depending on how many units he loses, and I expect him to lose a lot of units. This is almost desperation. So if this Thunderer goes forward, then this Cav can be backstabbed. And then the other Cav can be backstabbed. After this, after this Cav dies, the other Cav can be backstabbed. And then, so these two Cavs are dead. And then this particular Merman fighter is dead. And then... The Dwarvish Osaka can use 50% versus this Fencer. This is dead. So one, two, three, four units dead. That is a lot of units to lose in one turn. Let's see if the red player can pull this off. Four units. Okay, so he's, he's trying to close basically all the movements. So the backstabs that I talked about. So scrap that. Daunt has managed to somehow close the gate. I don't know where he, he keeps finding these units from. But now... It looks a bit better, right? Because the backstab cannot occur. However, however, uh, remember he has an off. So all I said is still valid. If he can manage, so for example, Griffin up, backstab, then off uh, manage. I'm not even sure if backstab is necessary. So Griffin up, one attack on the spearman, then off finishing off this spearman, and then we have ourselves one, two. Okay, three units. It's still a long. It's still a large number. Uh, anyway, there's multiple ways to 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 play this. He can actually, if he manages to take out the fencer, he can uh, obviously kill this cap because he has a lot of area around it, and then take out the fencer with the off. Actually, that that makes more sense. So all from fifty percent, take out the fencer. Cap will die to something, anything. It, it just this is a dead cap. And then this particular moment fighter is also dead. So. Uh, then if the Dwarvish Thunderer comes here, then this particular moment fighter will be dead via the backstab. So one, two, three units dead. Makes more sense. No reason to waste time on this Spearman now. Uh, and no reason to waste time on this Cav. Even if he levels up, not a big deal. A level 2 Cav is not that much useful when compared with a level 1 Cav. So let's see. Daunt is all in at this point. Oh my god, what was that? Was that was that the spearman? Was that a misclick? I refuse to, to I refuse to believe that Daunt actually left his spearman here. Uh, is he actually going for the poacher? I'm I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe okay, so I'm not sure whether that was intentional or a misclick. He might just try to kill the damage dealer, but the damage dealer is the thief and the thunderer. I wouldn't say the po poacher is also a damage dealer versus calves, yes. But I wouldn't say it's a, it's a terrible damage dealer. Okay, so he's going for it. It seems it was intentional. He was a bit unlucky, so now he's in a lot of trouble. Taking these risks versus knight, I, f I think that was not needed. He could just stay back, pull his units towards this side and then he should have been fine no reason to risk on this poacher now he's in a lot of trouble okay at least the calf can hit and he should be able using the fencer he should be able to finish off the poacher i hope for dauntless uh, sake that this is indeed the case okay at least he managed to finish off the poacher now he's saying i have four units you only have three and if your Thunderer misses, then I am in great shape. And if you think about it, the uh, Thief cannot really backstab unless it goes for the Fencer, which I personally would do. So I would put the Thunderer here. I would shoot the Fencer. Then I would push my Guardsman forward. Then I would backstab the Fencer. Depending on how much uh, hit, point the hit points the Fencer has, I will finish him off with the Guardsman. Or... If the fencer is dead by then, I would basically use the guardsman on one of these spearmen or even on the calf. And then it will be a three versus three. So not that bad for Daunt in the end. That was actually quite a neat play. But imagine him not finishing, not finishing off 
the poacher, that would have been incredibly bad because the cav would have had a lot of range damage dealt to. So nice play for Daunt, from Daunt on this side. Let's see what happens here because this is actually the more important battle. I don't agree with him attacking this Griffin Rider. He could have, um, uh, he could have uh, received a lot of retaliation damage. However, I guess he feels he is behind, which he is, and he feels that he needs to take more risks, which he does because he is, remember, two, village be two villages behind when compared to his opponent. So he does feel like he needs to take risks, and I understand him. So here he's saying, look, he, these, these particular units are going to deal so much damage. They are going to kill, we counted, three units for sure. So if they are going to kill three units for sure, if they kill these two and another one, or if they kill these three, it does not matter. I might as well use up all my units to deal damage, and he is going to deal three out of three. <laughs> this is incredible. So now suddenly this thief is more or less useless, unless he, he, you know, he plans to go around... And no, he's not. He can still take one more hit. So he can go around and kill the spearman. But now suddenly I feel like there are four units dead on the field. So he can go around, kill the spearman, get the village. Um, he can even go for this spearman. So he can go through. He can, he can just go with a clean approach of killing blue's units, killing basically the left-hand side and getting a village out of it rather than going in deep and killing as much as possible. So this is really, really interesting. It's really important how red prioritizes targets. If he doesn't kill three or four units now, it's still first watch though. I think if he kills three units, he's in great shape, but he needs to make sure he kills them. So he does push forward with the griffin. So I'm guessing he wants to prioritize this calf. He does not want this calf to level up. So he even probably wants to go in with the thunder and shoot the cab, which would be interesting. No, he just wants to go with the units inside and get to this cab. Now, this particular guardsman does not have a better target than the cavalryman, so he will go for the cavalryman. I would expect yes. Three out of three. That's always nice to see if you are if your color is red. And now he can even use the thief to finish off the cab. And then he can use the poacher to get closer to this particular calf. So poacher back, thief kills the calf, then poacher goes in and kills the calf, which is close to leveling up. Yeah, there it is. And now he has a lot of damage on this and reliable damage because poacher deals, deals as we know, four attacks, even two out of two with the griffin. That's just adding insult to injury. Now poacher can finish off the cab by itself. So, oh, okay. That was unexpected. However, he still has the Thunderer and I think he deals enough damage to kill the cab with melee. Let's see if he kills the cab with melee because melee has obviously more chances than ranged. Okay, he did kill the cab. That was, <laughs> to be honest, if that cab survived, that would have been terrible. So he, he forced himself a bit onto those two calves. He just wanted to make sure that target did not level up. I guess he thought the level two calf will absolutely demolish the oaf, will absolutely demolish the thieves. And well, it's a level two, it deals more damage. So he wanted to prioritize. However, now he does not have much left. Uh, he can only kill one more unit and it's, it's, He's not in a great position for backstabbing. So he could go with the Oath on the mountain and then backstab this fencer, but then he will only kill the fencer and that's it. Um, so it would be really interesting to see what he chooses to play. I would say Osaka always on the mountain. Let's see. Okay, he's okay. On the right hand side, if he manages to shoot this cavalryman, he's in a great position. And he did it. And this is going to be painful for Dauntless because now he has two wounded spearmen. And will he finish off with the guardsman or not? And again, this is a great positioning because now he can backstab with the thief. Will the guardsman be enough? No! 
<laughs> okay, very interesting uh, small skirmish on the right hand side. So now he will have to use the thief. The thief will probably finish off the cav. However, this particular fencer is unscathed. So that will. Okay, so he's basically saying, look, your cav is going to die to retaliation damage anyway. I might as well deal some damage, put some damage into this fencer while it's still night and I deal a lot of damage. And now I could even recruit an oaf because an oaf can finish off your fencer. I'm not scared with an oaf if I deal some damage into your fencer. So will he go for it? Okay, 16. You can see the it's just insane amount of damage. Now this particular fencer is absolutely useless versus an oaf. So we have one, two, three, four useless units versus more or less. I mean, guardsman is always it's always difficult to kill. This one is full HP, full HP. I would say mostly full HP units during the night. So well played by Red, not 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 going with uh with killing the calf here, making sure he uh making sure Dauntless has four problems to deal with rather than uh three. Because if this fencer was uh, full HP, the fencer would have gotten the village and Daunt would have only had three problems to deal with. <clears throat> okay, and I would say now off to be honest, um, I would say mass oaths. Um, this is what I would do. Okay, he's going to go with the clean approach. So he's going to probably the, the chance to kill on this fencer was not that good. So he's basically going to finish off the injured unit and probably get the village as well. Or he's going to backstab the spearman on the left hand side. So he's basically saying, I'm just going to kill the units on the left hand side so i don't get completely surrounded and okay never mind never mind forget what i said he's going to backstab he's going to take the the safe approach he's going to backstab first make sure he finishes off with the oath okay that oath took a lot of damage however now the fencer if he wants to kill the oaf will get a ton of retaliation damage so uh two units for an oath that's not that bad and then the fencer will be uh extremely injured so losses and kills six to six however i'm not sure how much money don has in the bank he has been on uh less villages than red for quite some time now so i'm not sure but if don can manage to recruit a unit then i would say he's in okay position he's in a much better position than he was before um problem is he has two fishes and he can't really fight on land whereas the griffins can so it will be really interesting to see how okay another griffin sure not a problem you know get get quickly here attack the leader attack the merman fighters on the land uh, or he can even one shot one kill the fencer because the fencer is pretty low at this point so why not now Daunt means business, so he is going to make sure he kills the other griffin because is it is a high value target. Two out of three, that's fine. And now he gets to use his, I would say, his mage around, make sure he actually deals the damage. Yeah. Oh, that was unfortunate. So that might seem like not a big deal because he has one more slot. That was a huge deal. He needed that. He needed to kill this griffin in as few attacks as possible because he does not have that many units left now he will he will be forced to use the bowman and then he will be forced to use the spearman to cover and if by a miracle the bowman if by a miracle uh the bowman uh does not manage to kill the griffin then his leader is dead now uh don's life is hanging by a thread let's see if he manages to kill the griffin or not Okay, he does. Now he desperately needs to cover his leader. And I would say he actually needs to push his fish forward, try to finish off this thief. He needs all hands on deck trying to kill units, as, as many units as possible. So at least two out of three with the spearman. However, the spearman is low. So there might be an opening for... So the offsucker can get this mage pretty easily. Uh, but if the spearman is so low, he might even be able to uh, get to the leader. Let's see. 
Okay, so he's going to make sure he eliminates this threat. So Oath is out of the equation. So now not a problem anymore. Uh, he needs to kill the thief. I agree. He's a damage dealer. But now, <laughs> now it's an interesting again. Life, Don's life is again hanging by a thread. He committed this fencer to this thief, which was on 60%. So anything could happen. He did not kill the thief. Now he needs to commit the fish instead of committing the fish to the poacher, which is a safer target. If this thief defends the fighter, this thief, I am under the impression he will level up right here from 70% from forest. He will level up. So he absolutely needs this thief dead. Will he do it? Will he do it? Oh, he did it. <laughs> that is... Suddenly now, Don's position is not looking that bad. I'll be honest with you. It's not looking that bad. So he's in a great position on this flank. So he did manage to get the kills. Uh, he will lose some units. Yes, uh, he will. But it seems he will keep this mage alive. And this mage can regain villages. His leader can regain villages. So somehow, some way, Don't manage through this diversion on the right-hand side managed to pull this off you know created a diversion showed uh, uh the um the audience his uh, magnificent assistant in terms of these um uh, you know this uh, this commando that can do a lot and then with the other hand he put the rabbit in the hat and then he said look i made a magic trick and so basically he uh, he drew red's attention to the right hand side um, and managed to uh, make a stand on the left-hand side and now regain his villages. However, his, his units are wounded and he does have fish on land and he will lose a lot of units and griffins can reinforce faster. <laughs> I'd say one, two turns, then he can reinforce with his leader because he's out of gold and here the diversion came at a great, great cost. So um again i don't agree with his initial move but so strategically it was the wrong decision and i'm sure he agrees with it in hindsight but tactically it was beautifully executed so he got the most out of this maneuver so he he really got the most out of it so let's see now it, it all comes down to how many units can red player kill on the left hand side as you can see he retreats the units he realizes there's not much else he can do he should also retreat the fencer, I feel. He should just lose the cav and move on. Uh, however, these units are not done yet. They will backstab. So let's see here. Okay. Is he actually going? He's going for the village. He says, okay, I am in a terrible position. I might as well take risks. And there, that is something that I agree with he is in a terrible position he does need to take risks fish on land he probably wanted to prevent um the dwarf taking 60 percent and then you know it's very difficult to kill a dwarf in a castle so he wanted to prevent that which is a great move to be honest but now look at the backstabbing potential here say backstab the fencer simply because the fencer can roam freely and take villages Definitely range defensor because no no retaliation or yeah range defensor backstab defensor and then take it from there might even shoot the spearman let's see okay that is really important so if Don manages to survive he's in a I wouldn't say good position I wouldn't say okay position but he is still in the game if he doesn't okay. Don't is still in the game. Don't rule him out. <laughs> Don't rule him out yet. Obviously, the cav is going to die. And oh, that was a painful shot. That is the the last thing Don't needed at this moment. And now backstabbing is going to happen. That particular spearman has no chance. There it goes. And Don't, I think is on a slippery slope now it's very difficult to recover from here simply because these once you get these guardsmen on the village it will take eons eons to regain this village so i don't see i don't see how 
uh, Dont could recover from this. Okay, top. He's going for the fish simply because the fish has 30%. He just says, look, I'm going to get the shore kills. I'm already doing a lot on the right-hand side. So make sure I get my kills and I don't get any retaliation damage and I should be fine. So backstab on the fish. That is a shore kill if I've ever seen one. And then Poacher should go for the Fencer, you know, deal some damage without uh, fear of retaliation. And oh, oh, that was a gift. That was the random number generator gods making a gift to the red player. They basically say, look, you've done a great job. You've attacked with dwarves. You've been incredibly bold. You deserve to have this kill. So uh, that is absolutely marvelous. So he has several options now. Uh, I would say the best one is to grab this village, uh, make sure he kind of forms a line, or he could even grab this village saying that, look, uh, it's going to take ages for you to take the village back, um, this village or this village. I don't think he should attack. Or if he does want to attack, he should attack this spearman. Again, trying to get three out of three, but I would say a village is a bit better. So yeah, he says basically, okay, you're going to attack these units, and also get this village that's not going to happen and you need to get this village as well you have just too many things to do and you have a fish on land so these units are going to eventually die don't get me wrong they are going to die however this particular village will be incredibly slow to take back also this village will be incredibly slow to take back so let's see how don decides to play it he needs to recruit and at the same time he will use the leader from the village to attack oh okay that's 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 fine that's fine excellent experience management from don't i would say go here go here recruit and then from the village uh attack the thunderer there it is oh where is the attack on the thunderer okay never mind that he's going for the thief Basically, he does not want any retaliation damage, and the thieves do deal a lot of backstabbing damage. And now he basically has free reign on this Thunderer with his melee units, which, to be honest, it's more of a sensible plan than what I was proposing. So he does not need to kill this Thunderer right away. He can just take his time and take this village and be absolutely fine. So mission accomplished. Don't take this village, takes this village back. However, he lost this one and he lost this one and he lost all these villages, which are going to be very, very costly. Wow. One, two, three. Oh, there's no reason why he shouldn't take three villages right now. One, two, three. Take them all. I, I would take them all if I were him. And also, there's going to be backstabbing on this fencer. I'm not sure. Well, he did not have any other choice, to be honest. So how quickly can Red kill this fencer? That is the question of the day. One village, two villages, three villages, 60%. And yeah, a shot in. Why not? There is the backstabbing coming. And one hit in versus 70%. That is painful. And I would even say the leader takes the village. Why not? Or go back and recruit an off or something of this sort. Uh, yeah, probably what I proposed was a bit silly because uh, he needs basically to defend on the left hand side. He needs uh, units um, to put pressure, maybe some more thieves for another rush during the night. Definitely don't take the village. That was just a silly mistake, a silly proposition from my side. Now, in terms of what blue is doing now he needs to regain this village however he also needs to kill this unit he needs to also recruit some more units he also needs to worry about he has a lot on his mind and okay that's one way to do it so and this particular quick mage did not do his job that's painful that's painful right there and oh this griffin rider cannot reach however there's another village up for grabs. And now simply this guardsman can retreat in this particular village. And I would feel that this thunderer could re retreat on the mountain and this thief on the 70%. So he should 
you should let Don't have these two villages back. It's morning. There's no reason for him to soak uh, damage unnecessarily. He has thieves coming. He can um, he can regenerate his griffin. He has the whole life ahead of him. So, and you see, this particular spearman is doing absolutely nothing. Uh, and um, he even missed one round of regen. Okay, he kind of did what I said. Um, guardsman here, uh, Thunderer in this village, uh, and Thief here. So that's fine. So, but of course, Don't wants to maximize the usage of the day. And he, because he wants to maximize the usage of the day, he takes the risk. And ladies and gentlemen, I think this game has just reset. This is unbelievable. This is incredible. And this is basically <laughs> 13 losses, 11 kills um, later on. And we have a level 2 unit on uh, Dauntless' side. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Dauntless has done it. He has managed to crawl back his way into this game. He's not out of the woods yet. Don't get me wrong. He's not out of the woods yet. He will need a lot of time to kill this Thunderer uh, because uh, night is coming. So he will need a lot of time to do that. Um, also, he has a fish on land and he probably will lose this fish. Um, not sure whether whether Red should go with that, with that exchange or not. He does have a poaching footpad coming. So he still needs to run left and right with these mages, which are not very good at it. And uh, he still is two villages behind. But um, <laughs> I don't know how he he's still in the game. He he is still in the game somehow, some way. Incredible play from Dauntless. So let's see what happens with the red player. So uh, of course the, the rush on the left hand side will be absolutely painful. He's basically retreating, saying there's not much left I can do. On the right hand side, I would just try on the left and then try on the left and right at the same time. Banking on the fact that now he has two villages and Don't won't be able to replenish with calves. He also has a level two unit who has more upkeep. Okay, that will eventually die. But again, it will take a long time. There you go. There is the horseman that I've just said Dauntless cannot afford. But he has also been banking for an incredible amount of time. Therefore, he managed to... Uh, save up some money for that particular unit and okay he's, he's wasting a lot of time there but it will eventually happen and now he only needs to worry about one village and of course this village again so it's a never never ending battle for Dauntless he needs uh, to constantly worry about the villages there's the backstab coming he needs some luck. Dauntless needs some luck at this point, and he got it. However, it's only a matter of time until this particular uh, unit dies, and he does not have calves to take this village back. This unit is dead. Then again, two villages lost. Uh, he will be able to regain the villages on this side. However, by the time he does that, this side will be broken. So, I mean, <laughs> it will be if 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 Dauntless finally manages to come back, it will be incredible. However, there are one, two, three, four, five units on the left hand side, and more units swarming on the right hand side. So it will be difficult. If it will happen, I will be surprised. He needed that hit. Look, that is a landfish. Landfish! Oh! <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, that was an unnecessary risk. I mean, 70%, he attacks 70% with the horseman. I mean, he's being overrun on the left-hand side. So probably he felt, I need to make a stand on the right-hand side. So you see, his, his fish fight on land. Um, but, you know, whenever you attack a thief on 70%, things like this are bound to happen. So now... This thief can get a free level up by attacking this longbowman. And this game turned, again, from 50-50, I would say. Okay, not 50-50. Let's say 60% to red and 40% for Dauntless. It immediately became 95% for red, 5% for Dauntless in a heartbeat. It was an unnecessary risk, I would, I would say. But, you know, when you see these units taking your villages, you kind of feel that I need to quickly clean up here. So I can focus 
my efforts on the left hand side so I, I understand that I fully understand that however you see landfish what happens when you put your fish on land I think he he took too many risks against that one thief um, and it did not pay off and as I was getting excited for this game to be uh, to be restarted it seems that it immediately ended by Dunkles taking I mean don't get me wrong if he did not take that risk he would have eventually died but as I say that look at Dauntless killing all these units at the break of dawn and getting another level 2 however these level 2's are actually working a bit against Dauntless <laughs> because they generate a lot of upkeep and red player has the village advantage so um yeah. we will see more level twos however this would make things more difficult for dauntless at the same time red cannot be throwing cannot cannot keep throwing expensive units at dauntless because you know he needs some some muscle on on, on the field um so Oh, he went for the leader kill. That was an incredible risk. Again, <laughs> that was an incredible. Why would he take this risk? The game is his. He probably thinks, look, I have, I have all these units coming from the right hand side. I need to give Dauntless another problem. I need to um, make sure Dauntless is scared to place his leader. However, this is basically throwing a a unit into the meat grinder now this mage has something to do and something amazing to do kill a griffin then the white mage can get on the village this mage also has a target I, it's just giving giving dauntless a lot of targets now i mean i was worried what would these level two units do now they can kill a griffin probably they are both exhausted and three out of three for dauntless it seems that somehow um uh, the gods want him in this game for longer However, okay, and there are the dwarves. Probably red is also probably red is also a bit sick because a bit sick of this game because uh, he 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 felt that he should have won it long ago, and he's basically going to recruit fighters. Why? Because he says fighters are difficult to kill no matter what you throw at them. I'm just going to walk towards your base with fighters, and you're going to have a hard time. And eventually, I'll be killing a unit. I'll be killing two. I have three villages advantage and this is basically a survival for Dauntless at this point. So let's see how this survival unfolds. He is going to try to get deal as much damage as possible. There's another landfish and uh Okay, so yeah. Unfortunately, this is bound to happen when you have four units attacking another unit. This is bound to happen. Red simply has too many units and more units coming. Look at this chain of uh, Dwarvish fighters. And uh, now that is just taking unnecessary risks. But what can Daunt do at this point? It's over, ladies and gentlemen. I don't see him staying in this game for long. I expect GG to come anytime soon at this point. No reason to have the mage out in the open, obviously. So good game, ladies and gentlemen. Dauntless made it last so long. I was even thinking that he's going to come back at one point, but unfortunately he didn't. Uh, and uh, the game ended a bit sooner than we were expecting. Look, Dauntless, nice game. And there is the leader kill. And uh, I hope you guys liked it. It was an amazing game. For, for, for a second there, I thought Dauntless will... Uh, come back and 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 at least make a stand for longer and maybe crawl back into the game and get the win um it, it didn't happen uh, he took uh, a lot of risks in in defense again strategically he made one mistake that's the only mistake he made this is my feeling at least but um then tactically he took a lot of risks that paid off but at one point uh, the risks uh, stopped paying off and that's when he lost the game I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you ladies and gentlemen next time.